I don't wish to be the bearer of bad news, but the best film that J.J. Abrams has directed is still Mission Impossible 3. Over the last 24 hours, uh, I have been processing my thoughts and feelings about the new Star Wars film, um, sleeping, and re-watching Ex Machina, which is a movie that came out earlier this year starring Poe Dameron and General Hux, or at least the guys who play them. Also, Alicia Vikander is in that uh, film as a robot. It's a good movie. I really like it. All about characters manipulating people for their own ends, for their own gains. <clears throat> cool. Um, so anyway, uh, I uh, had two choices basically with this video, and that is either to just briefly talk about what I thought about the movie and not go any further than that, or do a totally spoiler-heavy video. So I'm going to do the former. Um, and what's really tough about this is that um, I have to sort of um, become accustomed to the idea that this is a Star Wars movie uh, because it doesn't really look or feel like <laughs> any of the other Star Wars movies that I've seen. Structurally, it shares a lot of similarities with uh, particular Star Wars movies. And I could draw direct connections between many of the characters uh, in this movie to characters that have been in other Star Wars movies. Um, but it doesn't really feel like... Uh, any of the other Star Wars movies that I've seen so far. And I think that's down to the fact that, uh, you know, it has a brand new director with his own uh, sense of um, cinematic style. And uh, this is certainly one of the most fast-paced and um, action-heavy uh, Star Wars movies that have been made. Uh, there's, of course, uh, uh, there's plenty of dialogue scenes, but, um, yeah, they're, they're pretty brief for the most part. And there's a lot of unanswered questions in this movie. Um, one of the beefs that I have with it, I think, is what I refer to these days as Hunger Games Syndrome, and that there really doesn't seem to be... <laughs> there's so much that's unresolved, and that might end up being resolved um, before the end of Episode 9. Uh, but I can't even count on that, because this is going to be an ongoing series, where every two years there's going to be a new... Star Wars episode, um, as opposed to the uh, anthology movies which take place in the Star Wars universe but aren't part of that timeline. Um, we're going to have, you know, a Han Solo movie directed by uh, the guys who did the Lego movie. Um, we're going to have um, a, uh, a movie directed by the guy who did Godzilla from a couple years ago, and uh, a movie, uh, let's see, in addition to the uh, episodes that are already going to be done by the Jurassic Park, the sorry, the Jurassic World director and the uh, director of Looper. Um, but beyond that, uh, 10 could come two years after 9, and then 11 and 12, and I'm just wondering whether or not they're really serious about this being a trilogy that focuses on these particular characters, or whether it's just going to become, you know, another uh, Marvel series in which, you know, there's just going to be, uh, you know, a new movie w which it just you know, things, you know, uh, storylines are kind of drawn out over a longer period of time in the same way that the um, Infinity Stones and the threat of Thanos has been, uh, you know, uh, stretched out ever since, uh, you know, the first Avengers movie and isn't going to be resolved until 2019 when Infinity War Part Two comes out. If then, <laughs> it'll probably be resolved then, but then there'll be new, you know, uh, storylines that'll be uh, in the background of Marvel movies uh, beyond that, probably. Yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, when I saw episode one, The Phantom Menace in 1999, my initial reaction was I really enjoyed it. I had some issues with some of the way the, the style seemed a little stiff, uh, and then it seemed really stiff on subsequent viewing. So I liked it at first, but then I started to not like it. Um, this movie, it's the opposite. Uh, my initial reaction is I don't like it, um, but... I may grow to like it with subsequent viewings and with more time as I sort of get used to what this movie is and what it's doing versus um, what uh, 
what, what, what my expectations of it were. And I think part of that is the fault of the marketing of the movie, because there are certain characters <laughs> that were really sort of played up uh, uh, that don't really have a very significant role at all uh, in the new movie. And I'm not going to get into that right now because, you know, I'm sure a few of you still haven't seen the movie yet. Um, and um, I may end up saving my spoiler review for um, the video that uh, Luke Ryan's going to be putting together because he asked me to participate in a video in which I talk about, you know, my expectations for the movie prior to seeing it, which I've already recorded. And what my uh, how those expectations were either met or not met after I recorded it. Um, but uh, if you really do want to know more, and you have seen the movie, then let me just uh, give you a few bits right here. Um, this is what my conclusions are as to the significance of the characters in relation to previous Star Wars movies. Um, so. Here would be spoilers. If you haven't seen the movie and don't want to know this stuff, um, there would be some spoilers here. Ray equals Luke with a few elements of Han. <clears throat> Finn equals Han with a few elements of Luke. Poe equals Leia with a few elements of Han. Han equals Obi-Wan. B88 BB8 equals R2D2. Phasma equals Boba Fett. Snoke equals Palpatine. Uh, Maz equals Yoda. Kylo Ren equals Anakin and not Darth Vader, but like Episode 2 and 3 Anakin. Uh, C3PO equals Jar Jar Binks. Uh, R2D2 equals Deus Ex Machina. Luke Skywalker equals MacGuffin. And General Hux equals Adolf Hitler. <laughs> These are just some notes I made. Um, my favorite performance in the entire movie is from Dom Ha Gleason, who plays General Hux. Um, I got a lot of his character from what little screen time he, he has, whereas other characters that didn't learn nearly as much about, despite the fact that they were on screen a whole lot more. General Huck strikes me as someone who got maybe bullied around a lot as a kid and now has lots of power and authority and, and, and really, really wants to remind everybody of that every moment that he can. <laughs> when all, you know, just when he is basically standing on the bridge of a Star Destroyer ordering the gunners to fire, you can get the sense of his haughtiness <laughs> and his and his uh, and and the uh, and the insecurities he's trying to hide in this in his in his newfound power and authority uh, and status um, and when he gives his big speech to the troops when they're all you know in formation in front of him outdoors his demeanor really really reminds me a lot <laughs> of Adolf Hitler or at least the way actors have portrayed Adolf Hitler in movies like Max and Inglorious Bastards um, I'm eager to see more of him. In the subsequent movies. So, um, a couple of questions I had. Um, what prompted R2-D2 to wake up, exactly? Other than the fact that it was convenient at that point in the story for him to do so. What is the awakening, exactly, that Snoke refers to? Um, I'm not sure if this came uh, after uh, Ray had her little acid trip moment. Um, but if it did, then that's probably what he's referring to. But it's kind of unclear on that. It is called The Force Awakens. Um, so the awakening that he is discussing with Kylo is probably that, but I don't remember exactly whether it came before or after um, Ray's uh, little hallucination. <clears throat> How did Maz Katana get Luke's lightsaber? Last time we saw it, it was in his severed hand, tumbling down a shaft in Bespin. How could she possibly have gotten that? And finally, um, is Kylo going to have a new helmet in the next movie? Or is he going to do without? Oh, the, the, there's a moment in there where, uh, that reminded me of a movie called Collateral with Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is an assassin. And there's a scene in which Jamie Foxx is running in the opposite direction from where Tom Cruise is, 
and yet Tom Cruise still manages to place himself in his path <laughs> by, like, teleporting or something, you know, and the similar thing happens with Kylo in this movie. Anyway, so that's all the spoilerific stuff I'm going to get into right now. I would get into more um, in a different video. Uh, so, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and that's what I thought of it so far. And right now, as far as J.J. Abrams goes, I would probably rank this movie between somewhere in the middle of, of, of what he's done so far. Not as good as Mission Impossible 3 or the first Star Trek movie, but better than Super 8 and uh, Star Trek Into Darkness. Star Trek Into Darkness. As far as Star Wars movies go, where it ranks among Star Wars movie, I don't know. Gotta think about that more. <clears throat> Thanks for watching. And um, if you're not subscribed to uh, Luke Ryan, his channel is called Razor Wire Reviews, and the link to that channel is below. He does a lot of Star Wars uh, related videos. Um, and uh, I don't know how long it will be, but um, soon. I hope you'll get the chance to see that video that uh, he's going to be putting together with me and other YouTubers talking about Episode 7. Interesting, by the way, they didn't include that in the marketing, the actual Episode 7 part, but it's in the movie. Um, that's not really a spoiler. I mean, it's, it's not significant, but it's just surprising that, uh, that the marketing um, wouldn't include that, but it would be part of the movie itself. So the official title is, in fact, Star Wars Episode 7. The Force Awakens. So yeah, um, that video that Luke's going to be putting together with myself and other YouTubers, um, hopefully we'll, you'll get a chance to see that soon. Um, but I would subscribe to his channel now anyway, because he does lots of good videos. I really enjoy his work. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, and uh, I will see you again soon. Later.